I woke up that fateful morning with a heavy feeling in the pit of my stomach. Something wasn't right, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I went about my usual routine, getting ready for school, unaware of the storm that was about to engulf my life. As I made my way downstairs, I noticed my mother, Evelyn, sitting at the kitchen table, her face buried in her hands. Concerned, I approached her cautiously, asking if everything was okay. She looked up at me, tears streaming down her face, and with a trembling voice she said, Oh my dear, I don't know how to tell you this. Your brother Daniel, he's missing. Shock and disbelief washed over me like a tidal wave. My mind raced, trying to process the words my mother had just spoken. Daniel, my younger brother, was missing? How could this be? Panic gripped my heart as I frantically searched for answers. My mother clung to me, her sobs echoing through the empty house, and I vowed to do everything in my power to find my brother. News of Daniel's disappearance spread quickly throughout the community, and an outpouring of support and sympathy followed. The search efforts were massive, with volunteers scouring the area, hoping to bring Daniel home safely. As days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months, my desperation grew. I was determined to find my brother and bring him back to us. But as time went on, doubts began to creep into my mind. There were inconsistencies in my mother's behavior and her accounts of the events leading up to Daniel's disappearance. She seemed more focused on the attention and sympathy she was receiving from others than on finding her own son. It troubled me deeply, but I pushed those thoughts aside, not wanting to believe the worst about my own mother. Years passed, and the pain of Daniel's absence weighed heavily on our family. My father, unable to bear the burden any longer, succumbed to his grief and passed away. It was a devastating blow, and I felt as though our family was crumbling under the weight of our unresolved pain. It was during the process of cleaning out my parents' belongings that I stumbled upon a series of letters hidden away in my mother's desk. The letters were addressed to her, from an anonymous sender, and they contained chilling details about Daniel's disappearance. My hands trembled as I read each word, my heart pounding in my chest. The truth, it seemed, was far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. The letters revealed that my mother had orchestrated Daniel's disappearance to gain attention and sympathy from others. It was an elaborate ruse, a twisted game she had played with our lives. The anonymous sender had been watching her, aware of her deceitful actions, and felt compelled to expose her sinister truth. Anger and betrayal coursed through my veins as I confronted the harsh reality. My mother, the woman I had loved and trusted, had not only lied to us all, but had caused the untimely deaths of my father and the destruction of our family. The pain was unbearable, and I struggled to make sense of the web of deception she had woven. In the following years, I dedicated myself to uncovering the full extent of my mother's actions. I delved into her past, reaching out to people who had known her intimately. The picture that emerged was one of a woman desperate for attention and validation, who would go to extreme lengths to satisfy her insatiable hunger for sympathy. The more I learned, the clearer it became that my mother's actions were rooted in her own unresolved pain and insecurities. Growing up, she had been overshadowed by her siblings, always feeling invisible and unheard. Her elaborate scheme was a desperate cry for the recognition she had longed for throughout her life. As I pieced together the puzzle of my mother's life, a mix of emotions swirled within me. I felt anger for the pain she had caused, sorrow for the loss of the family I had once known, and a profound sadness for the woman my mother could have been if she had chosen a different path. But amidst the darkness, a flicker of forgiveness began to take hold. I realized that holding on to my anger and resentment would only perpetuate the cycle of pain that had consumed my family. I wanted to break free from the shadows of my mother's deceit and find a way to move forward. With time, I sought therapy to help me process my emotions and navigate the complexities of my mother's actions. The journey was arduous, but I slowly began to rebuild my life, piece by piece. I found solace in connecting with others who had experienced similar betrayals, forming a support network that understood the depth of my pain. Today, as I reflect on the tumultuous journey I have traveled, I realize that I am not defined by my mother's actions. 
I have chosen to rise above the darkness and forge my own path, guided by the values of truth and authenticity. I strive to live a life filled with compassion and empathy, helping others navigate their own traumas and find healing. The scars of my mother's betrayal will always be a part of me, a reminder of the capacity for deception that exists within us all. But they do not define me. Instead, I carry them as a testament to my resilience and strength, a testament to the power of forgiveness and the unyielding human spirit.